Hey guys, Ironwolf here. Today I'll be talking about Hyrule Conquest and the game's uh, balance as of version 0.3. The current version of the game, uh, the meta's been shaping up a little bit as of late, and you know, with the War of Twilight coming up and the multiplayer community actively growing a lot, um, and a lot of attention being put towards uh, the game's multiplayer, I wanted to address you know the balance of the game. Uh, I made a meta game video a couple weeks back talking about like what factions were good and what were bad and the reasons for why but this video will be a little bit different I'll be mostly talking about um, the big glaring weaknesses of all the factions and how you can fix them and how in my opinion they should be fixed and a good way to basically get all the factions relatively on par with each other so I'll be talking about all six factions so this is gonna be a pretty long video so please stay in for the ride alright first I'll be talking about the Kingdom of Hyrule now, the Kingdom of Hyrule, I would say, is probably the most well-rounded faction of the factions that are in the game right now. I wouldn't say that they're at the point where every faction in the game should be balanced around them. However, I would say that they are definitely, they definitely have the least amount of weaknesses, but at the same time, the least amount of strengths, if that makes any sense. Um, reminder, this is all just my opinion of the game. I'm sure there are other players that will tell you, you know, different things, but this is all my opinion of the game ever, uh, right now. So Hyrule, you know, it's a very mid-range, mid-game heavy faction. Uh, their early game is particularly strong, uh, although there are heroes such as Link and even Kazakh in some matchups that make the early game a bit stronger. Um, their mid game is very strong due to the fact that they have very high quality infantry units. But their late game is a little bit weaker due to the fact that um, since a majority of the late game in Hyrule Conquest is mass siege, uh, mass siege weapons, Hyrule's siege weapons, while strong, uh, don't compare as well to, say, the Gorons or the Zora. Um, still better than the Kokiri and the Gerudo siege weapons, though, which are not that strong. But, for example, like the Zora, their mage cannons are super strong, and the Gorons, their powder kegs, are super strong. But, you know, Hyrule can't really keep up with those two. So, while I would say that Hyrule Siege Weapons could use a slight nerf, that is also saying that Siege Weapons in general should be, you know, a little more balanced. But th those are, like, my main issues with Hyrule. And I also think that their good units are a little too expensive. Um, I think it's very difficult to get a decent-sized army of good units as Hyrule. Um, and also, I think that they have to build a little too many houses to try and get their population up. I think that's the case with a lot of factions, but for me personally, I think Hyrule really struggles with um, having you know units that are a little too too expensive, so it hurts their economy, and also the fact that you have to build so many houses that also hurts their economy. So these are a few of just uh, like my main um, my main issues. I just highlighted them right here, um, just so you guys can have like a visual like interpretation of what I'm saying. But yeah, this is basically my issues with Hyrule right now. And these are the things I would change about them if I were a dev. So I hope the devs, you know, they see this and they hopefully can make some alterations to what Hyrule's like right now. Alright, so now I'll be talking about the Gerudo. The Gerudo are a faction that I personally believe are slowly gravitating towards becoming the weakest faction in the game. They're just not very... they just don't stand out, if that makes sense. The, the Gorons, while in the past I've said they were the worst civilization in the game, there are some Goron players, specifically one, uh, that has been putting a lot of work and effort into trying to figure out a good strategy and what the Gorons can do. Um, and because of that, the Gorons have been, you know, getting a lot more resources as to what, like, they like what play style and like how they can play and what's a good way to play them. The Gerudo, on the other hand, have been really falling behind. Um, not a lot of people are playing them. The few that are have been saying like there's not really a clear way to play this faction it's very the best way i can describe it is they're a very watered down faction like there's no clear way of do they play aggressive do they play defensive well, how do they play because a lot of their units in particular are just not that strong they have a lot of really just lackluster mediocre units um even their like stronger in quotations units um just aren't that amazing they have nothing really that they're building towards that's amazing, and they have like no clear way to play the early game, if that makes sense. And so because of that, they're slowly, slowly, slowly creeping down the tier list and becoming weaker and weaker. Um, 
I made a list of a couple of the things, as you can see here. There's also another thing I need to talk about too is they really struggle economically on top of all these other issues that I've talked about with the Gerudo. Their food economy is just like the way their faction is designed to gather food. Like I understand that that's like Neff's way of making them unique and stuff, but it's just not very strong. Um, it's good for like the mid game and stuff, but early game food gathering is tough for the Gerudo. It's very difficult for them to. Um, be able to have a strong food-based economy during the early game. They have to really heavily rely on getting materials and then uh, use a market as kind of a crutch so that they can get enough food to pump out these uh, these good units later in the game. Well, another issue, uh, or going back to the issue before, when I say good units, I mean good units compared to what they usually have. Like, the, their good units aren't even that amazing. So they're just a very mediocre version of Hyrule, if that makes sense, unfortunately. I, I think they could use some buffs as far as like their food economy, some of their units, make their units a little bit stronger, and just give them like a playstyle, like make them an aggressive faction, make them a mid game faction, make them a late game faction. Like there's no real way to like right now they just people just don't know how to play as faction. So th those are those are my my gripes with the Gerudo. All right, the next faction I want to talk about is the Gorons. Now the Gorons, this faction has actually been seeing a little bit of love lately in the uh, in the community. We've been seeing mainly one, uh, really only this one Goron player by the name of Lulafin. Uh, it's a Taiwanese 0 AD player. He's been putting a, a lot of work with this faction. Everyone was saying this faction is the worst save in the game, and while I still personally believe they're very, very, very weak, he's been actually showing people, you know, like, hey, this faction actually has a lot of things they can do. Um, his main strategy with the Gorons, I'll probably make a video about it in the future because it's very interesting. Um, he waits until tier 3. He plays very, very defensive. It is very difficult, and he has to work very hard to do this because some, there are some very hyper-aggressive factions in this game right now. But his strategy is to basically play defensive the best he can and wait until tier 3. Once he hits tier 3, he'll start pumping out powder kegs because powder kegs, the keg throwers, are really 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 strong they can destroy so many like infantry units in like one go because the splash damage is insane and it does so much damage to buildings he'll just get a mass of keg throwers and he at that point you actually have basically lost the game which is quite interesting because i mean this faction has a lot of issues uh, mainly with its early game uh, it's it struggles very very economically because a lot of its buildings or the goron's buildings are way too expensive so a lot of the time they have to rely on a market to get the the resources they need and the going into the mid game and even during the early game. So any faction that I believe that a market has to become a crutch for, I think you know should have their economy buffed. So I think either Goron should have their economy itself buffed, or make their buildings should be a little bit cheaper, in my opinion. So that's the that's one of the big things I think that uh that uh that should be changed about the Gorons. Another thing too, is. They struggle a little bit to get food. Um, sure, these farms are really good, and they produce a lot of food. Like, uh, gathers are able to gather a lot of resources from them very fast. But the issue is they cost resources, so you have to pay resources to get food like at all, which kind of sucks. So I know this wouldn't make sense lore-wise, but if there could be like rock sirloin on every map, that would be a really good buff for the Gorons because then they wouldn't have to spend resources just to gather food. Like it's it's a little tough, and that would definitely help out the early game. Um, and uh, let me pull up my notes here on this faction. Um, so, <laughs> you see here, I've got... The, like, while this, there's only, like, two things here that I would change, they're so big that, like, it could just make the faction so much drastically better. Because right now, it's just so, so bad. Like, it's it's not even... It's not, it's not even funny how bad they are right now. It's, it's, it's bad. But, um... But there is one thing about this faction that makes them particularly strong, and that is right here, the keg throwers. This unit is so good. Like I mentioned before, Lolophone's uh, strategy is to turtle till he can get to tier 3 and get these keg throwers. <clears throat> now, like I mentioned, they have insane splash damage, and they do way too much damage to both buildings and units. Um, I would definitely suggest that the damage on keg throwers, or even just the splash radius, be toned down by a significant margin because right now it's just uh, they are very very good and uh while the gorons as a whole i think could use a buff uh mainly with their like i said economy uh eco related things 
the keg throwers do need to get nerfed. That that is definitely something that needs to be addressed. But besides that, this is this is really all I would change about the Gorons. Um, they're just you know there are very few things that can make them so much better, and there's those little things can make this faction as bad as they are. But I still have uh, hope for the Gorons, and we'll see if maybe Lilithan can pull himself out with this faction. So that's all I really want to talk about with that one. All right, next I'll be talking about the Zora. Now the Zora are probably the best faction in the game when you have uh, a certain hero, which I'll talk about later, uh, banned. The Zora, they are just, they are what the Gorons, this, they're like the complete opposite of the Gorons, if that makes sense. So not that the fact that they're aggressive or anything because the Gorons are defensive, but the fact that their buildings are about generally about the same prices as the Goron buildings, except because their units are so effective at gathering and their eco is just strong in general, um, especially with these fisheries and whatnot. They are they are so much better than the Gorons economically because of that. They are probably one of the factions that uses magic damage the most, which is very strong right now because there are very few units that have very uh, that have resistance to magic damage. So that's always nice. Their city center uses magic damage. Most of their units use magic damage. Most of their heroes use magic damage. Um, they're just a very magic-oriented faction, which makes sense. That's in the lore. Um, but the th problem is a lot of their magic units are just overly... Uh, just they are, they are just way too strong. Like, uh, it's it's absurd how strong the, some of their, uh, their magic-using units are. Now, I will note that besides the magic-using units... The Hydro fonts in particular are very, very strong. Um, they are the uh, giant elephant canopies uh, units that, you know which one I'm talking about. That unit should probably be toned back and moved to tier 3. Um, you can get them at tier 2. I would suggest that they get moved to tier 3. Um, they're just a very strong unit. And they're a very, f like, the unit is fine, but that unit does not need to be built till tier 3, if that makes sense. So besides those two, uh about the mages just flood masters in general especially uh, because that unit can just deal so much splash damage uh, very similar to the powder kegs or the keg throwers with the gorons they just deal so much magic splash damage you can just tear through waves of units so that one sapphire wardens as well uh besides the hydrofonts and the mages also the mage cannon needs to get a huge damage nerf because that's probably the best siege weapon in the game and like i mentioned earlier the late game meta for Hyrule Conquest really honestly is just siege spam or just mass siege weapons. Um, so because of that, not only do the Zora have the strongest mid game due to the fact that they can mass mages at around 10 minutes or they can start amassing mages at around 10 minutes, but they also have probably the strongest late game because of the fact that they can get all these on top of these mages and these hydrofont canopies. They can also get a bunch of mage cannons and they're just very unstoppable. Um, so either they need to nerf the damage on the mages and the mage cannon, or more factions need to have resistance to uh, magic damage. Preferably the first one, but the second one will do. And also, Hydrofonts need to move back to tier 3. So let me pull up my notes here. So the only buff I would say that the Zora need are, is just a bug fix, honestly. Like, they're a fine faction in pretty much every other aspect, except for these things right here. The mages, the mage cannon, and the hydro, uh, Hydrofront canopies. Uh, for example, uh, Talara's effect bug, the hero Talara right here, her effect doesn't even go off. Like, things like that. It's just little bugs are the, the main things that should be uh, buffed and fixed with the Zora. So that's all I really want to talk about with them. Alright, next I want to talk about the Kokiri. Now, this faction. Oh boy. This, this faction of little children. This, uh, oh my gosh. Okay. So the Kokiri. The Kokiri are probably... Okay, so the Kokiri in general are just straight up just the best faction in the game. Nothing... Uh, there is not another faction in the game that beats them. The only thing that beats Kokiri right now is another Kokiri. Now, the reason for this being... A combination of their economy. First off, their economy is completely... Or it's without a doubt the strongest economy in the game. Um, not only can they... You know, not only do they have access to all of this uh, this food right here with the berry mechanic... They also have a lot of really good upgrades for their uh, economy, but the, what makes their economy the best, uh, it's, it's so good, it's such a good economy, um, is their grove mechanic. So the Kokiri, the way they build buildings is they place down a grove right here, and on this grove they can choose to upgrade it into three different structures. This seems like, you know, oh that's pretty cool, it's unique. Well the issue with it is, the grove is the only thing that costs resources. 
Once you place down the grove, you can get three buildings off of it for free. So because of this, they are getting access to three buildings for the price of one building. So for example, with their battle grove, they have access to a house, a watchtower, a barracks, a stable, and a uh, thing that trained, uh, you know, like a mage barracks, all for the cost of one barracks. That is insane. And also, their, ho their market groves. They have access to a house, a storehouse, a watchtower, a market, uh, something that trains mercenaries, all that for, the for 100 resources. That's insane. Their economy is completely insane. Um, and because they can save all these materials from uh, only build having to build one buildings for the cost of th or three buildings for the cost of one, they can spend those resources into getting these berries bushes up or whatever. And because of that, their food economy ends up being very strong. So they can uh, produce all these super cheap units that they have, like Minutemen and Slingers, and cause havoc in the early game. Next thing I want to talk about with the Kokiri that is very strong is Deku Trees. Now, you won't see it in this video because this is a replay of a match that was, uh, sorry, a banned. But Deku Trees being able to be built in Tier 1 is absolutely maddening. It's crazy. That is one, probably, it's one of the strongest, like, melee, you know, regular melee units in the game. And not only that, but it, have, it has a thousand health. It's very tanky. You can garrison ranged units inside of it. And you can have about a half dozen out in less than 10 minutes. It's crazy. So that unit definitely needs to be, much like the Hydra Font, it needs to be moved back to Tier 3. It, the main difference between the Deku Tree and the Hydra Font is that the Deku Tree, while being a little bit stronger damage-wise, and having a, you know, a little more durability and uh, armor, it can be built in the first phase, t uh, Tier 1, which is very, very strong. So like I said, you can have a couple Deku Trees out in the early game and just completely dominate the early game and no one can mess with you. The next thing I want to talk about is Saria. Oh boy, this character. Definitely easily the best hero in the game. Uh, her effects are, when in formation, she gives a plus 25% attack rate to all ranged units within her aura. Um, this is a bit of a bug, because it gives significantly more than 25%. So, sorry, I combined with Slingers, can melt down just about anything that's not uh, mechanical or a building in a matter of a few seconds. Uh, so, sorry, I combined with that has insane DPS. Uh... Her garrison ability is 100% attack rate for anything that she's garrisoned in, specifically the safe hold. I'm pretty sure that only applies to actually city centers. Um, oh no, that's to uh, the f uh, fortress and city centers. So yeah, that's, that's still really good. So if you just put her in your city center, they basically cannot touch this. Um, they, it would just melt them down. And then her last ability is called Renewal of Life. Basically... She heals 0 0.8 uh, health per second, as if her other abilities weren't strong enough. So on top of making Slingers a, probably the most broken range unit in the game, and oh, and also, you need her to uh, be able to train Deku Trees. So not only does she give, uh, or make Slingers broken, and not only does she give you access to Tier 1 Deku Trees, but she can also heal things without having to, without, just by standing there. <sighs> that, that hero is very good. So, I would say the things that get, need to get nerfed about the Kokiri as a whole are their economy needs to be toned down a bit, mainly with the groves, the groves need to be addressed, Deku Trees need to be moved to tier 3, and Saria as a whole just needs to have her entire kit just completely fixed. Um, everything, pretty, mu pretty much everything about that hero is super strong. Uh, now, I'll talk about some of the buffs that the Kokiri need. I'll talk about them right here, as you see. So, you see down here, the nerfs, these are the big things that should get addressed with this faction. Um, but the, the buffs, they have a few buffs, despite the fact that they're being the best fact, the, 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 despite the fact that they are the best faction in the game, excuse me. Um, a couple of the buffs would be, they need stronger late game units. Now, the Kokiri, with Saria, they don't need late game units, because they have Deku Trees, they have Slingers, and they have Saria. You're already better than every army in the game at that point. But without Saria, they are severely, war uh, severely more nerfed. Now, in the War of Twilight, we have a hero banning system, which allows players to ban one hero. Um, um, most of the bans that I have seen so far in the tournament have been Saria, even if the other person doesn't play the Kokiri. It's just out of sheer fear that the other person will pick Saria and just mass Deku Trees and Slingers, because it's broken, and it's super easy. So, they need stronger late game units, because people that want to play, dedicated Kokiri players, like myself actually, um, that want to play the Kokiri dis uh, without Saria, despite the fact that she is broken, um, they, they need stronger late game units, because... 
sure, Minuteman and Slinger rushes are really good and really effective, but they are not nowhere near as effective as the Decker Trees and Slingers. So the Kokiri become more of a you know mid tier faction. They're definitely worse than the Goma and the Zora for sure, without Saria. So the late game units could use a little bit more pizzazz now that they don't have access to Deku Trees. Um, also, the other three heroes, specific uh, Mato, Ferroria, or Mororia, and uh, Gully, they could use a pretty big buff. Um, and what I mean by that is, they don't really give anything super useful. Um, Fado's unique unit is not very useful, Mororia's is okay, Gully's is terrible. And also their abilities themselves, they're just not amazing. So I was having a conversation with Feldfeld the other day, who's probably the best Zero ID player right now, or for vanilla Zero ID. We were talking, he was saying, yeah, without Saria, I just, I don't think picking a hero matters with the Kokiri. And I was like, wow, that's really sad. <laughs> because like, it's having a hero is such a nice benefit for most factions, but the fact that if the Ko Kokiri can't have access to Saria, like none of their heroes would just matter. Like it's it's bad. So they, they could use some buffs, both in them their own abilities and the units they provide. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about as far as the Kokiri. This is the faction that probably needs to get changed the se or the second most. The faction I'm going to talk about next needs to get changed the most. <laughs> now the next faction I want to talk about is the Goma. Now this go this faction is has remained in the top tier among uh, all the factions pretty much since uh, 0.3 came out. They have gone through a lot of transformations in their own meta. Um, <clears throat> originally it was Pincers and Spinals, then it was the Caretaker Rush, then it was the Hyper Aggressive Caretaker Rush, and um, due to my recent discovery actually um, with Mass Hive Keepers and Agatha, uh, the Goma have once again found a way to remain in the top tier. Uh, despite all the changes in the meta and other factions, you know, going up and down, and things ebbs and f ebb and flow, but the Goma are always there. Um, just like the lore, you know? <laughs> no matter what happens, there will always be the Goma. But, uh, yeah, so the Goma, they, they're intended to be a very aggressive faction. Um, but because of that, without Sari and Deku Trees, they have the best early game in the entire game. By a very significant margin. Um, the only thing that kept them in check before was Saria and her Deku Trees, but now that those aren't as much of an issue anymore due to the fact that they are not common, it's pretty much socially taboo to play Saria, and a lot of people in the tournament will ban Saria. Um, the Goma have pretty much just dominated the early game for a majority of factions, or in a majority of matchups with uh, other factions. So let's talk about some of the things that they could use some buffs, because they do uh, need some buffs despite the fact that they have the best early game. Um, their mid and late game is extremely weak. Their mid game units uh, are just not very strong. I mean, the Pincers and Spinals are decent, but they're not amazing. Um, but their late game units are just garbage. They just they just don't have a lot of they just don't have a lot of uh, a lot of good units. I mean, their their early game like their in the early game their units are very good compared to what other factions have in the early game. But in late game. They just don't really, you know, they don't they do not do so well. And also in the late game, they're very food starved. Because in the early game of the Goma, you're pretty much going to be scouring your entire half of the map for food. And you're just going to, pretty much as you approach the late game, you're just going to completely run out of food on your side of the map. Um, and of course you have farms, but Goma farms aren't too effective. Because you can only have like one worker on a farm. Now Goma units gather food very well. However, because their farm is not the strongest they suffer in the mid to late game when you start to run out of a lot of this food from like the wildlife and the bushes and whatnot <clears throat> excuse me so they they really struggle in the mid to late game because of that not only because of their units but also their economy starts to suffer at that point um another thing too they have a lot of bugs um good and bad ones or yeah bugs that work like in their favor and some that work against them for example the matriarch the Matriarch completely, for some reason, completely takes away all melee attack that the Goma Queens have. So when you have the Matriarch, Goma Queens just can't even fight at all for some odd reason. I don't know, it's a very weird bug. So things like that. Um, so that's kind of a big deal. Uh, some of the things that they need to get nerfed, there's a couple of them. The first thing I need to talk about as far as nerfing the Goma is these eggs. The Goma eggs, uh, I like the mechanic a lot, but the issue is they generate territory around them. And you can also place them outside of the uh, outside of your own territory. I don't know if placing them outside of your territory is a bug or not, but I definitely know that them producing this much territory is for sure a bug. You can have your Goma Queen come over here, plant a bunch of eggs into your opponent's space, and start building stuff right here. Like, it's crazy. 
So uh, that that's uh, that's a pretty big uh, bug. They need to get changed. Also, another thing too, planting an egg because it counts as a building. For some reason, although it does make the population cap go up, as you see here, I'm at four, 145 out of 25 population. Planting an egg makes the population cap go up, but for some reason, I'm pretty sure because it's a building, it doesn't make a, it doesn't like stop once you hit your population cap. If that makes sense. So like you you can get like the the population cap like it only works for eggs. So like I couldn't build something for my my town center here because I'd be I'm capped out. It won't let me produce anything. But because the eggs are something that you upgrade into a unit, it lets you go over the population cap. And so that's definitely something that needs to be addressed, or else you end up with something like this, where you have, how many is this? 126 hive larva, and you only have 25 population. Like, that's that doesn't need to happen. So something like that, that needs to get nerfed a bit. Another thing too, caretakers, this unit right here. Let's bring up the stats if I can. Okay, no, I can't, never mind. But that unit is probably one of the best units in the game. Uh, not only does it have an insane amount of magic damage, specifically shadow, but it's a range unit. It's very cheap and easy to get. You can get it in the early game, and it does a ton of damage to buildings. Now, it can take a couple of ter or caretakers can take out a house in only a few like only a few seconds. Like it's crazy. They do tons of damage, and also they do tons of damage to the units as well. So, and the last thing that's broken about the caretakers that I need to talk about is they outrange every structure in the game. So they can just sit outside of the range of a town center and just bombard it with shadow damage, and they can do any. They, the other faction can't do anything about it. So that's what's so strong about the caretaker rush. So those are just some of the things that need to get changed about the uh, the Goma. I'll bring, pull up my notes real quick right here, but uh, you see here, yeah, they they need stronger. Um, oh, excuse me, sorry. They need stronger late game. They need stronger, uh, or they need their bugs to get fixed. And they need these eggs, or these egg glitches specifically, and the caretakers to get changed as well. Once those get changed, the Goma will be a much better faction. But right now, just with these, with these bugs and this, the caretakers, like uh, they're just so strong. Like they, you can't really challenge them, especially with Saria and Deku Trees gone. You just can't, you just can't challenge them. So, and I mean, these buffs would be nice too, because they would let them compete with some of the other factions uh, later in the game. But the reason that these aren't as big of an issue in the meta right now is because these right here are such a problem. They can just end the game so fast that they don't have to usually worry about late game units. But when they don't end up uh, ending the game very fast, they do have to worry about it. So, you know, there's some things that could really get changed about the Goma. So that's, that's all I would really say about them. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, by the way, because um, I hopefully will do some more about this or, you know, this type of stuff in the future. Um, and if you guys have any feedback for me or anything, just let me know. Um, these, these are all my opinion. I'm sure if you ask other competitive players, they will tell you maybe the complete opposite in some categories. But this is all my opinion of the game right now. Um, I like to think I'm one of the better players, so hopefully that means something. And my, uh, my opinions have some form of validation to you guys. So I really hope you, you guys appreciate it. Be sure to like it, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys next time.